Desert Grove. By Clayton, Allison, Bill, Sabrina, and Jack. Has anyone ever been to the desert? Yeah, I've been to Phoenix, Arizona. I've been to Grants, New Mexico. No, I've never been to a desert. What is it like? Deserts are dry. That's true. Definition of a desert is it can only average seven or fewer inches of rain a year. What about temperature? A desert must be hot, right? No, not always. Some deserts can be very cool, especially at night. Many people who visit the desert are surprised by the weather. It can get very hot during the day and then very chilly at night. I think that nighttime in the desert is scary. Are you afraid of all the animals that come out at night? Many desert animals like to hunt at night instead during the heat of the day. When I lived in the desert, I wanted to stay inside during the day also. It was too hot to go outside. At night, when it cooled off, that was the time to go outside. Weren't you afraid of stepping on a rattlesnake or something? Yes. My parents always warned me to slow down and look carefully where I was stepping or putting my hands. What other kinds of animals live in the desert? All kinds of wildlife can live in the desert. Most of the animals that live in the desert have adapted to their environment. They have adapted because they're either short water or they know how to find it in unusual places. The gila monster stores water in its tail. The tail grows big and fat when it's filled with water. Then, the gila monster absorbs the liquid stored in, stored in its tail and can last for a long period of time without having to find water. The desert tortoise also stores water. All desert animals have adjusted in one way or another to their habitat. Even the plants know how to store water. They usually grow either very small leaves or spines instead of leaves. That way, the plants prevent water from evaporating from their leaves. I always wondered why so many desert plants have thorns and spines. Well, now you know. But another reason plants have spines and thorns is for protection. Because there are so few green plants for animals to eat, many plants have thorns and spines to help protect themselves. Protect themselves from what? From hungry, thirsty animals. If it's so hot and dry in the desert, then why do people move there? I think that people love the desert because it's beautiful in its own way. The sunsets are beautiful. The desert often has little bits of dust in the sky, and that makes the sunset look very bright orange or red. I think that people love the desert because it's a unique, beautiful environment. Desert. Shing, shing, sparkle, sparkle. It's flaming. In a desert food web, coyotes, mountain lions, and bobcats all eat. Ringtail, western whiptail, raven, black tip, jackrabbit, and pine marten. Those all eat. Pilla, red breasted nuthatch, Pacific tree frog, Edis checker spot, Douglas's squirrel, and mule deer eat plants, seeds, fruit, nuts, and insects. The animals are cactus friend, devil horn, golden eagle, Elf owl and red. The plants are saguaro, grassula, octillo, and desert pea flower. The desert precipitation and temperature are the low temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, the high is 30 degrees Celsius, the low precipitation is 0 millimeters, the high precipitation is 1,100 millimeters. Fun facts. The Sahara Desert consists of 30% sand and 70% gravel. Some deserts, such as the Gobi and Antarctic deserts, are always cold. Roadrunners are part of the cuckoo family. Animal species are limited in the deserts. Deserts receive less than 10 inches of precipitation. Deserts cover about 20% of the world. Deserts have very low humidity. The video game Mario Kart 64 features a track called Calamari Desert, a reference to the Calamari Desert found in southern Africa. Camels go for days with no food or water. Sand only covers 20% of deserts. What you can do to help.
one of the things you can do to help is to try not to drive off-road. When you have vehicles such as buggies, SUVs, and other um, like vehicles, you tend to go very fast, and that damages a lot of flights in the area. Um, make it your business to know about any mining or drilling operations proposed for desert areas. Read newspapers, watch television programs, surf the net, stay in contact with your government representatives by email or snail mail, attend town meetings to say the rest of what's going on, post any such operations that might harm the desert habitat or the plants and animals that live there. Whenever possible, vote into office people who will keep the welfare of wildlife as a priority when deciding land management issues in the area of mining, drilling, farming, tur tourism, and ranching. The problem of what to do with nuclear waste has no easy solution. In problem solving this issue, we must never think of the desert as expandable. Or expendable. No one, no one habitat is any more or less important than any other. We must fight to keep them all, no matter how hostile or remote. Many of the unique plants found in the desert are offered for sale in rep <coughs> nurseries. <laughs> this is never a valid reason for going out into the desert and digging up the plant you want to place in your yard. When visiting the desert, leave only footprints and take only pictures. Um. One of the most dangerous things that affects deserts is mining in a desert. Mining in a desert damages and disrupts the delicate ecosystem and harms plants and animals all alike. Although mining activities take place in small areas, they have major impact on the surrounding areas. When a mine is found, workers, workers clear all the vegetation nearby, leaving many animals without food. When machines come to help the digging process, the smoke they produce adds carbon monoxide in the air, damaging even more life. But the worst part about mining is abandoning the mine. Now you're probably wondering why that's bad. Doesn't that mean no more mining? Well, when workers leave, they leave behind materials such as rubble, mining byproducts, and the most dangerous, extremely toxic chemicals that kill off the rest of the life that survived the mining. Mining is not good for, de for the desert and this needs to stop, or some of the types of species that call the desert home will go extinct. Surprisingly, tourism is a big problem in the desert. Although we are grateful for this amazing place where we live and enjoy experiencing all the wonderful sights of nature, we sometimes love it just a little too much. Did you know that animal populations are declining because they are so attractive to people? Populations have decreased in number because of the pet trade. Desert bighorn sheep, indicators of land health since they are sensitive to people's effect on the environment, have dwindled since people disturb them and they have to compete with livestock for food. Then there are tourists that collect desert plants for yard decorations. This causes very big problems because these plants are rare and fragile. Even though cactus rustling is illegal, people still do it anyway by packing them in suitcases or sending them through the mail. These plants are already hard enough to replace, and it keeps on getting harder and harder. They often die when they are removed. Some species of cacti are even gone because of these tourists. Luckily, there are people out there who care about nature, the animals and plants within, and they do not harm the desert. Because deserts are very fragile as tourists, we should be aware of the consequences of our behaviors. Tourists should use only licensed tour services and guides when exploring the fragile desert habitat. You should always try to see what you can do to protect slash help the environment. You probably know that there aren't many deserts in trees in the desert, but there are still some out there. But the amount of trees in deserts is dropping fast. For example, in Africa, firewood is used up 30% faster than it's being replaced. Also, humans are affecting deserts by using land for grazing animals. Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Phoenix are examples of us taking over deserts.
Many off-road vehicles are used in the desert, such as dune buggies and dirt bikes. These vehicles compact the soil, reducing the ability of the desert to absorb the little water most deserts get. This also destroys vegetation, vegetation and also reduces lizard population. The estimate of the damage done to the desert for off-road vehicles will be about $1 billion in repair. The, desert of the, world are, the deserts of the world are threatened by a combination of human exploitations and testing areas. We humans are misusing the desert's purpose by bringing animals that will graze so much that many of the desert plants and animals will be destroyed. The things we use, such as potassium cyanide, to mine gold will soon poison wildlife. The main reason that the desert is being used irresponsibly is by using it for nuclear testing and by people going in their off-road vehicles and running over the plants and destroying the soil so no plant will grow again. People are not realizing the damage we are doing to the desert. Trenching, building underground pipes for gas, oil, water, and more. They are making the soil crust and rock surfaces unstable, causing them to erode in strong winds. Scientists believe it will take more than 30 years to make these areas recover. I believe if we can ban off-roading, we can save the desert back, and all the animals brought to the desert would leave. The nuclear testing areas will be abandoned and torn down so wildlife can live in peace without, without any cars to worry about, and the plants will be restored. The desert will return to its normal state before humans came and destroyed it.